Hi, I'm Pastor Stephen Pribble, pastor of Grace Orthodox Presbyterian Church. And I'm Pastor Brian Shortley of Reformation Fellowship, Reformed Presbyterian Church. Welcome to Reformation Forum, the program relating the unchanging truth of Scripture to current day issues. And tonight's subject is differing perspectives on salvation. This is a very important program, and we urge you to stay tuned, because actually there's only one way of salvation that's taught in the Scriptures, and unless you know it, unless you're following that, you're on your way to hell. I'll put, just put it bluntly. Uh, Brian, atheism and Hinduism are both monistic systems of philosophy. Now tell me, what does this mean, and uh, how does this influence their views of salvation? Uh, what I want to tell you here is, first let's understand what monism means. Just think of oneism or pantheism. Atheism, okay, teaches that there is no spiritual reality. Okay, basically we, we are just bags of atoms. We are atoms randomly floating in the void. Okay, everything that exists came from this little cosmic ball of matter that exploded in the scientific theory. Naturalistic atheism. Okay, it's a monism of materialism. Hinduism, on the other hand, is a spiritual monism or oneism. Now, everything is the one cosmic reality. The rocks are God, the fish are God, you're God, the turtle's God, the dirt claw's God. And basically, we're living in Maya, and then through reincarnation and through uh, spiritual techniques and so on, eventually you merge back into the cosmic oneness. Now, with biblical Christianity, with the Bible, you see, there is true transcendence. Now, what that means is, is that God created the world, He created the universe in six days, and there is uncreated being, Okay, God is unique, He's uncreated, He's not dependent upon anything, and then with man in the universe, you have created being, which is dependent upon God. Now, with atheism and Hinduism, because there is no transcendence, because there is nothing above and beyond created reality, okay, first of all, with atheism, eventually everything will be dissolved and destroyed and merge back into the cosmic chaos. The universe will expand into an icy death, or it will contract into a fiery ball. There will be a supernova. And if you're an atheist and you're watching this show, let me tell you, your house, your loved ones, everything you've ever done, all your achievements, everything will forever be lost and forgotten. It will be as though you never even existed. See? Because everything goes back into the cosmic monism. Now, also with Hinduism, it's the same thing, except it's spiritual. With Hinduism, okay, the goal, what is the goal of Hinduism? What is the goal of New Eastern mysticism? The goal is, is to eventually merge back with the cosmic reality, the cosmic soup, okay? Remember, their God is impersonal. Okay, with Christianity, you go to be with, live in heaven in God's family, with Jesus Christ. You retain your identity. You retain your personhood. You lose that with Hinduism. You lose that with atheism. Okay, so salvation in these systems is meaningless. Now, with these systems, with statism, because they do not believe in transcendence, they do not believe in God, they reject all the spiritual realm, that leads to statism. That leads to dictatorships. That leads to communism. That leads to socialism. That leads to welfare statism. Stalin, LBJ, John F. Kennedy, Bill Clinton, Hillary. Because there is no transcendence, then whatever the highest form of power in society becomes the god of that society. Now with Hinduism, because they do not have transcendence, because they do not believe in an eternal separate existence in reality, their view of salvation is basically through technique. And the thing that's ridiculous about Hinduism is eventually everybody's going to get there. Everybody's going to merge back with the cosmic oneness. Everybody's going to merge back with this cosmic soup this energy force. So, in Hinduism, you cannot have ethics. You cannot have true meaning. It's absurd. It's an absurd worldview. It's an absurd religion. And atheism is the same. Atheism, everything is meaningless. We're all going to burn up. We're all going to be destroyed. Everything will be forgotten. It will be the, as though you never lived, whether you're Adolf Hitler, whether you're Mother Teresa, Princess Diana, whether you're a, a, a very moral person. It doesn't matter. You're all going to die. So the only system that makes sense, the only system that's rational, the only system that uh, really 
offers anything to the human race is biblical Christianity, and that's what you need to believe in. Biblical Christianity, trust in Christ, because there is a heaven and hell. We are not going to merge back in the cosmic soup. There is not going to be the end of everything. There is eternal heaven and eternal hell. You need mm. to repent. You know, many people think that the way to get to heaven is to be a good person. I hear this all the time. You know, well, I'm a good person. God wouldn't send me to hell. I'm a nice guy. You know, I, I don't go out and rape people and commit murder. I'm a nice guy. God's going to let me go to heaven. Why is this view unscriptural? Well, Brian, it's very important to understand uh, what we're talking about here. Differing perspectives on salvation, but there's only one right way of salvation. There's only one way that is acceptable in the, in the sight of God. And yet it is true that so many people have the idea, hey, I'm not as bad as uh, so many people around me. As, after all, just read the newspapers. You can read about really bad people. Uh, but I'm not that bad. Uh, after all, uh, you know, I don't, I don't lie to uh, try to deceive uh, uh, heads of state like the president does. Uh, you know, I just I lie a little bit on my income tax or maybe uh, lie about how uh, somebody looks when they say, how do I look, or something like that. But, you know, I'm not really all that bad. But, you know, you know, Brian, as you were talking just a few moments ago, uh, it, it just really struck me that, uh, you know, how can people say that, you know, there's, a, there's good in all religions and, and all religions teach basically the same thing? Because, you know, the, the Hindu uh, view of uh, reality and the atheistic materialistic view of reality are, are just uh, totally different from biblical Christianity. But what about, getting to the question, what about the person that says, I'm really not all that bad and... Uh, all I have to do to get to heaven is just be a good person. And so uh, someday I'd, I'm going to become a good person. Well, the problem with that is that it is totally contrary to uh, the scriptures. And in uh, Romans chapter 3, the Apostle Paul speaks very clearly about this subject. He says, We have before proved, both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh, seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. And then he goes into uh, some specifics to show and prove his point. But I ask, how can words be any more clear? The Bible says there is none that doeth good. There is none righteous. Uh, these are categorical statements. The Bible is teaching that every single individual that ever descended from Adam by ordinary generation, every person that's ever lived with the sole exception of Jesus Christ who is born of the Virgin Mary, had a human mother, but the Holy Spirit impregnated her. He did not have a human father. Everybody else except for Jesus Christ is not righteous, does not do good. So judged by God's absolute standard, there is none righteous. There is none that doeth good. So don't kid yourself. You think you're a good person, but God's word says you're not a good person. There is none that doeth good. Now how can we make that any more clear? You may be good in your own eyes. You may be good according, according to your own perverted standard of right and wrong, but according to God's absolute standard, you are not good. And so, therefore, you cannot go into heaven. We must remember that God's standard for getting into heaven is absolute perfection. And there's only one person in all of human history that has ever achieved and attained under the standard, and that is Jesus Christ. He is the only one that truly merits salvation. And if you want to get into heaven, you have to get into heaven through Jesus Christ. You have to believe on the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. So the, the problem with uh, thinking that, hey, I can always begin to be a good person, then God will have to let me into heaven, is you're deluded. You're not a good person. And uh, judged according to the absolute perfection of Jesus Christ, you fall short. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, including you. And the only way you're going to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. You need to repent of your sins. You need to humble yourself before him and ask him to save you because he's the only one that can save you. Brian, some people think that uh, as long as they counteract all their bad deeds with good deeds, then they can get into heaven. As long as the, the good deeds outweigh the bad deeds, they can get into heaven. What's wrong with that thinking? Yeah, you know, I hear this a lot. You know, I, you talk to people and they have this view 
of uh, like the scales, you know, the scales of justice. You got, and if I can do, you know, I've got all this sin over here, but if I can, you know, do more good deeds, you know, work at the soup kitchen and uh, help out the, the homeless and do all this stuff over here, uh, well, I'll counteract that. And if you look at Hollywood, you look at the people in Hollywood, you know, they live their life and they have, they get divorced eight and nine times and they commit adultery and do all sorts of wicked things. And then uh, they start to get old and they start doing all this charity work. Like, well, if I do all this charity work, God will, God will overlook all these things I used to do, you know, like uh, committing adultery and, and all that sort of stuff. Well, unfortunately for people who believe that, it doesn't work that way. First of all, the Bible never teaches that you can do good deeds to eliminate your bad deeds. It doesn't say that in the Bible. It doesn't teach that in the Bible. The Bible teaches that guilt, when you sin, that guilt is permanent. And there's only one way to get rid of that guilt, and that's to wash it away by the blood of Christ. Now let me read this one passage here. This is Luke 17, 10. And listen to this. So likewise you, when you have done all those things which you are commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants, we have done what our, was our duty to do. Okay, you don't see any human merit there. God doesn't accept human merit in salvation. Okay, without the shedding of blood, this is from the book of Hebrews, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Even one sin merits the eternal death penalty. Mm. You've sinned, I mean, look, everybody, we've lied, you've had lust in your heart, fornication, you name it, drunkenness, all these things. We've sinned, we've sinned many times, that sin remains on your record. You've got a bad record. You've got a bad record before God. Every sin is against you. I don't care how many supposed good deeds you do. They will not eliminate any of those sins. There's only one way that you can eliminate those sins, and that is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, trust in Him for your salvation. You have to believe in what the Bible says about Christ. You cannot concoct your own Christ in your <laughs> mind, okay? He lived a sinless life. He was born of the Virgin Mary. He lived a sinless life, okay, in the place of his people, and he died a sacrificial death on the cross. The wrath of God that was due for your sins, if you believe in Christ, that wrath is placed upon Jesus Christ at the cross. And all the sins that you've committed are imputed or placed upon Christ on the cross. All that guilt is removed, okay, and you're as white as snow. You're as white as snow. You're pure. And not only that, but that sinless, perfect life that Jesus Christ lived becomes a free gift to you. And then when you stand before God on the day of judgment, okay, God will see Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ's perfect righteousness mm -hmm. will be yours, and you'll be just as righteous as Jesus Christ. That's the only way to get into heaven. There's no other way to get into heaven than that way, because none of us are perfect. Mm -hmm. None of us are without sin. We're a bunch of rotten sinners. And if you think you can... Uh, bargain with God or mm. pay God off or do good works or do whatever to bargain with God to get rid of that guilt, you're wrong. Christ, it, it, it required the death of the only begotten Son of God. Nothing less would eliminate the guilt of sin than the death of the sinless, perfect sacrifice, the sinless Son of God, Jesus Christ. And that's the only way that you can be saved is to look to Him for your salvation, trust in Him, Lay hold of him by faith and appropriate his perfect redemption. And if you're not doing that tonight, if you're not doing it, you're going to go to hell. You mm. need to repent. You need to repent. Now, our phone numbers, you're going to see them popping up on the screen periodically. Give one of us a call. Both of our numbers, if you live in the Lansing area, they're, both, they're, both, they're not long distance. Give us a call. We'd be happy to meet with you. We'd be happy to give you some literature to read. We'd love to have you come and visit our church. Please give us a call. You know, uh, Biblical Christianity, it teaches that Christians do not contribute one iota, not anything, to their salvation. But it also teaches the necessity of good works. Uh, is that a contradiction? Well, Brian, it is not a contradiction. If you understand it the way the Bible keeps these two concepts in balance, uh, if you get away from that biblical balance, then you do have a contradiction. And this is one of the most difficult points in all of uh, theology to understand. What is the difference, I'm sorry, what is the relationship between faith and works? The Bible says without faith it is impossible to please Him. 